welcome back to the Monastery of Flavor at St. Anthony Industries. Today we're going to be talking about the Phoenix 70, which is my favorite brewer that we make here. Uh, before we get started, my name is Josiah. Today in the studio we have September. Say hi, September. Hi, September. And if you have any questions during the live stream, make sure to ask those in the comment section and September will relay them to me if they're pertinent to the Phoenix 70. And we'll do our best to answer the questions that you ask in the comments. Also in the studio we have Aaron and Andy, and let's get straight into it. So let's talk about the Phoenix 70 a little bit. The Phoenix 70 is our proprietary 70 degree angle. It is made of stainless steel and it is a pour over brewer without any thermal mass to it. Um, it does not have the exoskeleton um, it just has the inner skeleton to that holds the perfect paper filters just like that which are dual wall perfect paper filters designed specifically for the Phoenix 70 and this is kind of the OG uh, brewer here at Phoenix at St. Anthony Industries and it is one of our favorites and we kind of built St. Anthony Industries off of this brewer and our legacy tamps. So today what we're going to be doing with the Phoenix 70 is comparing it to the flat bottom brewer our F70 and our wave filters. So we're going to do two pour overs at the same time. I'm gonna do my best and talk through the differences that I see. And then we're going to taste the different coffees. And I will relay what I'm tasting in between the two different coffees. Today we're going with a Kenya from, Saint, uh, from Salt Lake Roasting Company, who are good friends of ours here in town. And so I have pre-weighed these out and we'll get started right away. Any questions? Did I miss anything September? We're good to go? I think you're all good to go. All good to go. Okay, so we have our water heating up here. I'm gonna pre-wet our filters. What I'm gonna do with this is I'm going to try and uh, go 50 grams at a time. And hopefully by doing that, we'll be able to see the differences in time, if there's any differences in time. And then we're gonna taste it um, and, and I'll let you know what's going on with these two brews. So get some water here. <clears throat> All right, and I'm gonna pre-wet these filters because I don't want the water to draw towards my filter when I'm brewing, I want it to draw towards my coffee. Uh, so for osmosis sake, I do wet our filters, even though they do contain less paper dust than the standard filters that you would get anywhere else. The difference is also between these two filters is the creping is different between the two filters. Oops, I should have ground my coffee first, I guess. Let's do that. Good thing about the Millerite though is that it's really fast, so I'm gonna ground my coffee here. Have it all dialed in at 60 clicks for both brews. And we're gonna do 22 grams in, 350 grams out. <clears throat> and before we get started, I'm just gonna re-wet my filters so that they're not cold before I start. I don't want my filters to be cold because that will change how they brew. Okay, so I got that one done. Just gonna exchange this for this. If you're interested in the Millwright hand grinder, we do have other videos about the Millwright hand grinder and it's awesome. Our goal with the Millwright hand grinder was to create a consistent grind, competitive with other grinders that are double the cost. So our grinder is about ha half the price and the end result is about the same. That is the selling point on the mill right. <clears throat> Something to keep in mind in between these two brewers, the Phoenix 70 and the flat bottom brewer. Again, the Phoenix 70 has no thermal mass. It uses, it's just an open brewer, whereas the F70 has a flat bottom and the F70 has a thermal mass. And so you're gonna get some temperature differences. The differences between the two brews uh, are, are for uh, different tastes in what you like in your coffee. So the Phoenix 70 will actually start off at a higher temperature than the F70, unless you really preheat pre your, your brewer. Because what happens is during the bloom stage of your 
your brew. You're going to have uh, the thermal mass of the F70 is actually going to cool your brew a little bit unless you preheat it. Most people don't preheat their ceramic brewers. The Phoenix 70 does not have that thermal mass to cool it in the initial bloom. And so it's actually gonna be a little bit hotter in the initial bloom and then it's gonna, and then it's going to brew a little bit cooler throughout. And I actually like that about it because it has that 70 degree angle. You get more water to coffee contact during the brew at a cooler temperature. And so it really smooths out the extraction of it. You get a really nice cup of coffee every time. Whereas the F70 is really insulated and it has that wave filter. And so we're gonna outline the differences between these two coffees here, or the two, the two brewers as we brew. Tear these out. So I plan to pour initially 50 grams for my bloom on each one. I'm gonna wait 20 seconds before I start this one, and then we're gonna continue on with that. So pour 50 grams in. my bloom. I'm going to wait 20 seconds before I do this one. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, and then once this hits 30 seconds, I'm actually going to pour this up to 150. I'm gonna get this one to 150 now. And then I'm gonna go 50 grams at a time until the end of my brew. And then we'll time them each to let you know which one's faster, which one's slower. They're actually, uh, from my tests before, they're about similar speed because even though this is a dual wall filter, the creping in the filter is different than the F70 is oops actually so but we'll see we'll we'll see what happens here so 200 grams on each of these at 130 I'm gonna pour it up to 250 and then do the same on my other one I'm trying to keep this as similar as possible for the sake of the test obviously it's not perfect science We do plan to uh, make a post-production video, so it's more straight to the point. Hopefully uh, on the, the temperature routing of each brewer as we brew them in real time so that you can see, and then we can hopefully distinguish the differences between how they taste in the end as well so that you can choose the brewer that's right for you if you want more highlighted flavor notes or you want a more rounded brew. Each brewer is specifically designed for different things. So the F70 is hope, probably going to be a more rounded brew than the uh, Phoenix 70. And you're gonna get a lot more bright tasting notes with the Phoenix 70 than you would with the F70, for instance. Okay, 22 grams in, 350 grams out. Pour this one up to 350 here. And then I will conclude my brew. Okay, I'm shooting for about three minutes and 20 seconds for my brew time. Let's see if I can hit that mark. Actually, looks like the uh, F70 Brewer is a little bit faster than the Phoenix 70. Remember, I started my F70 20 minutes after my Phoenix 70, and it's actually a little bit faster, as you, as you can see. So, but 20 seconds difference, and they, they both drew down at the same time. So with the Phoenix 70, with that uh, cooler brewing temperature, it's not that much cooler than the F70. Again, we're hopefully going to make a video to demonstrate that. 
But in the end, the, the, the difference is in temperature brewing creates a, a different kind of taste in your cup. So what we're going to do is taste these two brews and see what the differences are. So I'm gonna take some cups here. Let's have some water. Josiah, I have a question for you. Yes. So, on the mill right, would 60 be a good starting point point for your pour over in general? On the mill right, uh, that's normally what I start with. With the manufacturing, you might get some variation in the depth of the burst, but for the most part, 60 is where I tend to start. I did. We did have a coffee, uh, the Hex coffee, which I was grinding at 55. And then we also had a coffee from uh, Passenger. Was that where we got it from? Yeah. And that brew, I had to set my dial at 65 and the time, they timed out similarly. So it really depends on the coffee and you might go down to 50, you might go even below that depending on what you want uh, from your coffee. But yeah, I tend to start at 60 in general with the Millwright hand grinder. So I'm gonna let these cool for a second. Uh, as coffee cools, it is more distinguishable. You can taste it better as it gets closer to your body temperature. If coffee's too hot, you can't taste it, it just tastes hot. And if something's too cold, you also can't taste it because it just tastes cold. So that's why a lot of coffee shops, if they don't, if they're not specialty coffee shops, they tend to make their coffee a lot hotter than the standard like specialty coffee shops that you might enjoy going to. All right, let's taste these. It's a really clean cup of coffee. Not a lot of oils in there. It's probably due to the uh, dual wall filter that we use. The Perfect Paper filters are uh, dual wall, so they're just a folded, hand folded filter. That's why they're a little bit more expensive, expensive than like standard single wall filters because they're hand folded, they're not pressed like a lot of filters, and that's what makes them really unique as well. But you take two, the two folds on one side and the other, and then you put your coffee in there, so it's a dual wall filter. And the two, the two walls with the creping that we used for the filter create a really, really clean cup of coffee. It's gonna remove all the oils, and it's also going to trap all of the microfines in the filter, so you're not gonna get those in your cup. But overall, this is really, this is really nice. It's actually pretty well-rounded in general, but I do have a lot of like the acidity coming through, uh, probably because of the cone shape, the 70 degree uh, filter. Now let's get a drink of water and taste this one. If, if I'm not mistaken, this one does taste a little bit hotter than this one, but I'm not getting, maybe I just need to let it cool a little bit more. I'm not getting the same notes as I am in this one. This one's a lot more like rounded chocolatey than this one is. This one's a little bit more fruity. Again, it's a little bit cooler, so if I let this one cool a little bit, maybe I'll get those, those fruity notes. It is a Kenya, so it should be a fruity coffee. Again, from my tests earlier, the temperature differences between these, and if you know what your brewers do, uh, if they're a single wall brewer uh, uh, decanter like this, then you're gonna get, the temperature's gonna drop dramatically really quickly. Or if you have a dual wall decanter like this, the temperature maintains a lot longer. And I think we once made a video to demonstrate that, how the single wall versus the dual wall does make that difference. But in general, when you do a pour over like this, you want the, again, you want the temperature to drop. You want it to cool down so that you can taste it. So if, you're, if you want to be quicker out the door, maybe the Phoenix 70 is the perfect way to go. Yeah, the F70 here, I'm not getting as much fruit out of it. It is very sweet, it's super sweet, uh, not as acidic 
it doesn't have the fruitiness that the Phoenix 70 has. This one is sweeter. Again, it's as it cools, it gets sweeter. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect comparison. However, if you do this at home, you will probably, if you do it exactly how I did it, you'll, you, I wish you could taste it through the TV or through the computer screen or through your iPhone, but yeah. It's awesome. It's good. So that's the difference between the Phoenix 70 and the F70. Uh, we're focusing on the Phoenix 70 today because we got it back in stock. We've been waiting for a long time. A lot of people are waiting for the Phoenix 70. It's one of most, a lot of people's favorite brewer because it's beautiful. I mean, look at it. And as it's brewing, you can see like the steam and everything like that. And it also is a uh, super modern design with its steel skeleton and it's heavy. It's heavy duty. A lot of people take it camping because it's not likely to break like a ceramic brewer might break. Uh, obviously be, you know, don't throw it around. It's, it's an expensive brewer and that's for good reason. And it's because it's awesome. I love what it looks like on my countertop at home and I love brewing on it. I love experimenting with smaller brews with it because of the 70 degree angle. I like to do like 10 gram brews, uh, <laughs> 10 gram brews. I said that weird, didn't I? <laughs> Anyhow, so the Phoenix 70 is an awesome brewer for your countertop at home. If you want to brew good coffee, I would definitely recommend this. Any final regards, questions regarding the Phoenix 70? If you put the questions in the comments, we'll do our best to answer them in the comments section after the video posts. How about that? Yeah? I think that sounds good. Sounds good. September says it sounds good. Thank you guys for watching our tutorial today with the uh, Phoenix 70 and we will see you next time in the Monastery of Flavor at St. Anthony Industries. Thank you for taking the time with us today.